Hi guys, this is the Action DJ, and welcome to episode two for projection mapping with me, Action DJ. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is where we left off last time. Um, we were able to successfully project map uh, uh, this uh, the cube that you can see. Uh, we were able to do the left and right sides, and uh, that's where we left it uh, at. Um, so I'm gonna go back to output, and I'm gonna go to advanced screen again, and this is how it was which is awesome that's still like that okay um, so let's uh, talk a little more about the advanced screen setup and the things you can do um, if you go to output transformation tab uh, and click on any one of the slices you will see some options over here uh, so one of the things is slice one copy uh, if you double click you're able to change the name uh, which is quite handy because uh, then it uh, also shows the name over here and it allows you to sort of manage your services better uh, there was this one project I was doing uh, which uh, required me to create some 400 surfaces it was a lamp shade uh, that we created and each lamp uh, I mean the lamp shade had these small small pieces of uh, blocks um, and we had to map each of them separately it was crazy but by naming them uh, in a certain way I was able to manage the whole thing much more easily than I would have if it was just slice one, slice two, and copies and whatnot. Uh, okay, so uh, you can change the name. Uh, then you have your point more, which is uh, linear, busier, and perspective. Uh, now, this is something we're going to talk about today. Um, so, what if uh, we are not uh, using. Um, the cube. What if we had uh, some sort of a ball-like surface, or uh, something that involved some curves that had to be mapped? How would you do it? Uh, anyone who has used uh, some sort of uh, Adobe uh, or or a graphic tool uh, might be familiar with uh, this option. Um, when you use pen tool, you get these options. So. Uh, now don't look at the uh, the cube because it will look weird but just pay attention to the screen I'm actually gonna minimize the cube part right now uh, so don't worry about that okay so you see these points appeared as soon as I selected the zero uh, option and I don't know if that's how it's pronounced but I'm calling it zero okay so I can use these points and make curves which is so cool so if this was some sort of a surface like this you know it allows you to map it with much more precision using these now uh, as you can notice there is a certain amount of distortion happening it's being stretched it's it's like a um, like a ball so you know the video is getting like wrapped around that sort of a point and that will happen uh, but then that would happen naturally as well because the shape when you pr project onto something which is curved will look something like this it would not look like a flat uh, thing uh, unless you wanted to make it look like a flat thing then we would use different options like a masking option or something um, so Using these, uh, we are able to do the the curves. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'm just going to now delete this slice because it has served this purpose, and create a new slice. And actually, delete slice one as well. Okay, change the video. So uh, another thing that I want to talk about in this video is uh, what if you have a more complex. Uh, so let's now go back to the cube, the cube that we have. What if you wanted to uh, do the cube mapping for the two surfaces that we did using just one slice? And there will be times when you would not like for a cube, but uh, you would want to use one slice or one surface. But because of the surface shape, you want to uh, customize the sh uh, shape a bit more you would need more points you just can't do it for so that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna go and say add points um, so the input selection right now is the whole thing which I'm okay with so I'm gonna go to output as where I was and click on add points boom 
So now I have one, two, three, four more points and one in the middle. That allows me to do this. Okay, number five. Um, so, um, bring it back. Okay. Um, now let's try and map um, the cube using this one uh, point, uh, this one surface. So um, now, as as you understand about mapping, you will understand the, the perspective that you need to keep and other things related. And those things you will learn easily on your own when you play around. So I just want to say, make sure when you're doing something like this, you keep. Uh, in mind that you don't distort the input and output transformation uh, because if I go it like this then you see it's getting distorted so I, I should try and keep it as close to being similar as possible so uh, what I also mean by that is if this is rectangular don't have uh, this as square uh, unless you really need to because then it will stretch and sometimes it will look okay, sometimes it won't be noticeable, but sometimes it will be very noticeable, uh, especially when you have something like a face, you know, a face gets stretched, you instantly notice. Okay, so let's map. Um, out, oh, sorry, input, going back, putting this mistake there, output, and now I want to bring it down to this point. I'm going to take this one. Keep it in the center because, like I said, I don't want to distort it. Um, I can't see this. So. Alright, so that's there. Um, that's in. That's in. That's in. Um, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to change this guy to come here so it will look cooler uh, and remember since this is being stretched on to two surfaces so there are two squares now so if I do this like just use one it will stretch and look weird so I'm gonna bring it up and somewhat have two imaginary uh, squares or uh, you know over here now so these are the things that I meant that you will learn when you play around with it and things you know you gotta keep in mind I'm just gonna bring them closer before I map them more accurately and in input selection I'm gonna kill this black stuff by dragging it closer okay and goes there that goes there this guy comes in so see now it's not distorting if this point this particular point was down here it would distort but I'm just gonna keep it in the center where it started from and that allows me to balance it out perfect uh, again I'm not very finicky right now for uh, it matching exactly So that's that. Right there. And then the top point. And this guy in the middle somewhere here. Uh, or here. I mean, ideally, I would use two surfaces, but this one is just to show you that uh, by adding more points, you can make more complex uh, sort of. Uh, shapes uh, if this was to go in for whatever reason I could you know uh, and uh, I could actually do this also like take this guy up and cover somewhat of the top area as well but now it's gonna now it's getting distorted uh, to a point which I don't like but so I'm gonna bring it back so um, by adding more points you can create more complex surfaces uh, you will need to at times. Um, just uh, something to remember is that your input and output uh, should be set up in such a way that it doesn't distort your image. Okay.
uh, and same goes for removing points you can click on that it will remove points in the same order as it adds on to it so if it added one two three four I'm going to go to, I'm going to do a save and close uh, and I'm going to again go back to advance um, so uh, just to show if I do remove points so see the, the middle ones that it had it removed so that bit of mapping is gone now I'm going to do a red one so hopefully yes because this is what I saved and the other one I just cancelled um, also uh, on the right hand side uh, you will see options like brightness contrast uh, now I must say that I have actually dealt with a lot of projection mapping softwares there are very very few softwares that give you uh, this kind of great controllability and advanced features per slice where you can change uh, settings um, you know like your uh, RGB settings your brightness contrast settings otherwise usually it is for the whole composition or the whole sort of a project but this is great because sometimes it could happen that you want something to be slightly more brighter than the other or the contrast to be slightly different uh, and you know your color composition uh, uh, you want something different so this does allow you to do that by simply uh, clicking on the slice and changing the parameters uh, if you go to the transform tab uh, the options that you will see are pretty much your uh, the extra options that you will see uh, your X and Y positions, your width and height, which you can uh, sort of uh, do by also simply clicking the command key, like I explained in the previous video, and by uh, dragging it, you, you see the parameters are changing. The X and Y position is changing. Um, so it's something if you want to be. Uh, this is if you want to be very precise. Uh, if you have some calculations going on that hey, I want this from top at 540 pixels, uh, and you know so and so on. Uh, you can use uh, this uh, option otherwise uh, mostly um, you wouldn't need to you can use rotation uh, if you want um, uh, from this one that's handy uh, so you can see I am rotating the thing the surface which is uh, I mean it, it, it might be good at some points uh, also you can always double click and just jump to whatever you want to jump to um, these options are the same as uh, as your edit point step. Um, I'm going to now just again do this. So that's pretty much uh, for the edit points and transform tabs. Uh, input selection, output, transformations covered as well. It shows you your composition and your resolution. Now let's come to, um, or actually we'll cover masking in the next uh, episode, uh, masking and cropping. Um, I would like to mention the um, uh, that these two options over here. Uh, if you click on Show Display and Slice Info, uh, then I don't know if my camera is actually picking it up, but it shows me uh, information about my slice on the projected uh, projected area. Uh, since uh, I don't know if the camera is picking it up, so I would not talk about it more. Uh, and same for uh, show grid info when you uh, click on it it shows you some information uh, about it okay let's see if it shows here oh there you go so I can show you why the screen um, see so you see the grid of uh, if it's in perspective or not I see that there's some uh, bending going on over here you know so I, uh, this allows me to sort of uh, better adjust it and this no it doesn't show me this stuff so never mind um, okay then uh, that's uh, the end of episode 2 for projection mapping tutorial uh, in the future episodes we are also going to be covering uh, things like multiple video sources um, so for example if you want uh, to have completely different videos from different layers uh, I'm just going to do a save and close from different layers uh, how would you do that and uh, how would you map around it, uh, etc. Uh, so we're going to talk about that, and uh, we are also going to be covering uh, cropping, masking, etc. So stay tuned, guys, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, hope you liked it.